Hi, I'm John Gehagen back with part two of my short story called The Eighth Dwarf about uh, Walt Disney's making of his first animated feature, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Now, as you'll recall from part one, we were introduced to two major characters. One was Sleazy, known as the Eighth Dwarf, and the other was Snow White, who was a, uh, a German uh, Jewish immigrant uh, escaping uh, Nazi treachery uh, and recently moved to the United States. And we left uh, a last part of our story with um, Snow White confessing that she was seeing an older man who was abusive to her and Sleazy resolving to take her place at her meeting with him uh, at an upcoming bar uh, and uh, try to right the wrong. So here we go with part two of The Eighth Dwarf. Sleazy wanted to be sure Snow White's boyfriend was at the Macambo before he arrived, so he showed up 20 minutes late. It was still early, not half past five, and the bright California sun flooded the parking lot. Inside, however, the nightclub was so dark, Sleazy's eyes needed a moment to adjust. Looking around, he saw the place was deserted, save for a white-jacketed bartender polishing glasses and a shadowy figure at a table in the back. Sleazy approached the table doing his best bantam strut. The man was sitting quietly, his head down, doodling on a napkin. A Chesterfield cigarette lay in the ashtray beside him. When Sleazy arrived, he was eye level with the table. Expecting someone, he said with an edge in his voice. The man looked up and in his best avuncular manner said, why, yes, Sleazy, but I see I'm getting the consolation prize. It was Walt Disney with a smile so practiced you couldn't tell what he was thinking behind it. Mr. Disney, what are you doing here? I think you know, said Walt with a sparkle in his eye. Snowy not coming? To his credit, Sleazy quickly regained his footing. Look, Mr. Disney, I'm here to tell you that Snowy doesn't want to see you anymore. Disney's face remained impassive. Sit down, Sleazy. There's a few things we need to talk about. Sleazy took his hat off, plopped it on the table, and climbed up onto the banquet, an ocean of whiteness separating the two men. Snow White isn't here, Sleazy, because I told her not to come. You see, she does what I say because she wants to be in pictures. Disney paused a moment, put his pen down, and picked up a cigarette for a long, leisurely drag. Do you want to be in pictures, Sleazy? Walt Disney was the picture of certitude. His hair, smelling faintly of pomade, was slicked back on his head. His mustache finely trimmed, and the light gray nailhead suit he wore custom made for his five foot, 10 inch figure. Trying to maintain his equanimity, Sleazy looked Disney in the eye. I don't see what that has to do with anything, Mr. Disney. Oh, it has everything to do with it, Sleazy. Let me explain. I intend to make motion pictures. With any luck, they'll be artistically significant and commercially successful. But in order to do that, I need everyone to play their part. You see, a film is a complex machine. If one part fails, it can bring the machine to a stop. All parts are replaceable, of course, but some require a little more trouble fixing than others. That's why I need people like you and Snow White to do exactly what I tell them. If I wish to be romantically involved with Snow White, even though I'm a happily married man, and here his smile implied we were both men of the world and understood these things, I need to know I can rely on Snowy's discretion. And if you want to work in this town, I need to know I can trust you to keep your mouth shut. Can I trust you, Sleazy? That depends, Mr. Disney. Wrong answer. Disney crushed out his cigarette with more than a hint of irritation. After a moment, he thought better, though, and began again. 
you're missing the big picture, Sleazy. Snow White is going to put us in a whole new business. There's not going to be any compromises on this production. In fact, this movie is going to have so many firsts, anyone associated with it is going to see their career skyrocket. Oh, this town is full of dreamers, Mr. Disney. What makes you any different? Snow White isn't just a cartoon, Sleazy. It's the world's first full-length animated feature. Nobody's ever made one before. Big deal, said Sleazy, shrugging. And it's going to be in color, Sleazy. Every picture until now has been black and white. Imagine what it will be like to see a movie in color for the first time. People will be lining up outside the theaters to get in. Sleazy had to admit Walt was an incredible salesman when he wanted to be but he still wasn't buying it. I don't see how that helps me or Snow White, Mr. Disney. Look, animation is just the start. I have greater aspirations than drawing some mouse with oversized buttons on its pants. Someday I'm going into radio, then live action movies, and God damn it, even an amusement park. I'm going to call it Dislandia. I haven't come this far just to fall on my face. Look, Mr. Disney, I don't see how smacking Snow White around helps with any of this. She's a good kid, just misguided, and you shouldn't be the one misguiding her. After all, you've got a reputation to protect. Which is exactly why I need to know whether I can count on you, Sleazy. From where I sit, Mr. Disney, you're not in a position to make threats. Walt shook his head, folded his cocktail napkin in half, and slipped it into his jacket pocket. Ah, Sleazy, you fail to comprehend. All right, I'll spell it out for you. And here, Walt's voice took on a hint of menace. If you agree to keep silent and not interfere in my personal matters, then you can have a career in this town. Then Walt's mood brightened. After this picture, we're shooting Pinocchio. You can have the lead if you play your cards right. How'd you like to have your name above the title? Even then, everyone knew Waltz was the only name that went above the title. That's when Sleazy knew the man didn't mean a word he said. And if I don't? Well, it would be a shame to see your career cut short. Is that a joke, Disney? No, Sleazy. It's a promise. I don't care how you get your kicks, Mr. Disney. Just leave Snow White out of it or there's going to be trouble. Oh, there's going to be trouble, Sleazy, just not the kind you think. And with that, Walt stood up from the table and exited the nightclub, whistling a happy tune. Sleazy went to Snow White after that. She wasn't hard to find. She lived in a ground floor sublet two blocks off Sunset. When he arrived, the door was partially open. He poked his head in, only to find her spread across a Murphy bed, eyes closed, mumbling in German. Since the room was a sublet, none of the furniture belonged to Snow White, which explains why it was so worn and dirty. Sleazy looked around for an open bottle, but found a needle on the night table instead. Snow White was chasing the dragon. Even semi-comatose, Snow White looked lovely, she wore a pale blue satin robe, which she'd gotten from a George Harrell publicity shoot. It was the only nice thing she owned. Sleazy climbed up on the bed beside her, straddled her waist, and slapped her cheek several times, his manner more loving than irritated. Once he'd roused her, he grabbed her by the shoulders and began to shake her. Are you crazy? Why didn't you tell me you were stooping Disney? Oh, I'm sorry, she said, stifling a yawn. I was afraid if I told you, you wouldn't help. Then closing her eyes, she slumped back onto the bed. Do you have any idea what you've gotten us into? He won't fire us, Snow White said. He needs us for his picture. He might need you. You're a principal, but there are seven guys ahead of me. Oh, sleazy, Snowy said her voice slurring, her eyes half-masked. He won't hurt us if we just do what he says. 
You can't trust this guy, Snowy. He's nuts. He thinks he's going to build an amusement park and call it Dislandia. Don't let that worry you, Snowy said, a husky note entering her voice as her fingers began loosening Sleazy's tie. Oh, enough of that, Sleazy said, slapping her hand. What are you on, anyway? And don't tell me it's an apple. It's not important. It's what makes me happy. Jeez, kid, don't say that. There's more to life than getting high. Oh, that sounds funny coming from a dwarf she said, patting his cheek. That's why you should listen. After their confrontation, Walt and Sleazy struck an uneasy peace. As it turned out, Walter cared more about making pictures than he did about sex. Though we still saw Snowy outside the studio, he ceased contributing to her crimson choker. Sleazy was relieved they'd reached a compromise, but he knew it wouldn't last. It was only a matter of time before Walt got even. That's the kind of guy he was. Elephants weren't the only Disney characters that never forgot. Thus ends part two. Stay tuned for part three of The Eighth Dwarf. Thanks for listening.